This comes to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to a new experiment in the life of the Lordsbridge team of churches. Today would have been a fifth Sunday, a Lordsbridge Sunday, when we invited everyone to worship together. For obvious reasons, we can't do that in the same physical space. But we hope, if you're watching this video, that you will get a different sense of connection with others in the team who are doing this too, perhaps at the same time as you. Over the last few days, each of Lord's Bridge's core team of clergy has recorded a contribution to this service. As you watch it, please feel free to join in with the prayers. The words will be on the screen, either silently or aloud. And make the prayers your own, just as you would if we were meeting in the same place in a church building. Of course, you can pause the video to look at the family activities with any children in your household or go back if you want to repeat a prayer. A video has that advantage. Before going any further, you might like to pause the video to fetch and light a candle to mark this as a time for prayer or to fetch a Bible to follow the Gospel reading later. As this is an experiment and we are learning on the job at the moment, Please forgive us if this is a little rough around the edges. It seemed important to produce something homegrown and local, rather than merely to point you towards something produced elsewhere, despite it being with better equipment and skills. We'll see how this goes before we decide whether to do it again. And your feedback and ideas would be very welcome. Just get in touch with your lead minister or with me. Today is also the Sunday when we plan to say thank you and farewell to Becca Gilbert and her family. Becca has been a team vicar here in Lordsbridge for the last five or so years and has been lead minister in the parishes of Barton, Coton, Halton and Hazlingfield, as well as taking on team-wide uh, portfolios in areas such as weddings and organising student placements. If all had gone according to plan, Becca would have been moving house in a few days, starting her new post in Carlisle Diocese after Easter. But now, of course, her house move is on hold for the next few weeks. Nevertheless, because she will leave us before too long, we will continue with the transition to interim ministers and teams in her parishes, though we will take the opportunity this delay gives us to do it slightly differently in each place. Coton and Barton will hand over first, followed by Halton and Hazlingfield, and Becca will continue to minister in the background, assisting in some specific ways in this current crisis. We'll hear from Becca a little later in this video. But for now, here's Paul Garnell, the team's curate and soon to be interim lead minister in Coton with an opening prayer. Lord of life, thank you for your faithfulness to us and to the church communities across the Lord's Bridge area over many generations. Thank you for the hopes and dreams that you have given us to be a network of worshiping communities, each responding to its own context. Thank you for every person who is part of our network, for all who are on a pilgrimage of faith, for those we bless in the wider community and for those who serve us as ministers and share in leadership. Lord of life, today we pray as communities facing two uncertainties. All of us are now learning how to be the body of Christ beyond our normal gatherings, in our homes, in online meeting rooms, on social media and on the phone, instead of in our churches. Thank you that we still have each other and that you are ever present not bound by our preconceptions about particular places. Some of our church communities and those who share in leadership are facing a further uncertainty as Becca leaves and we mark this change. Thank you that you gifted her and her family to us. 
for all that she has brought us and taught us. Thank you that we could travel together for a while. We ask that you would be present amongst us, comforting us where we feel a sense of loss or anxiety, and envisioning us where we cannot see beyond the present moment. We pray that the life of your spirit may fill the hopes and dreams that you have given us, and may grow in us our communities, the signs of the kingdom. Despite our many distractions, in the church's year, it is still Lent. In Lent, many people give up or fast from some specific thing, chocolate or cake or single-use plastic, perhaps. It seems this year that all of us are now taking part in a more considerable Lenten fast. The fast that is our enforced withdrawal from many of the things that we would normally do, not least from physical contact. The purpose of a Lent fast is to remind us of the role of self-discipline in our lives and particularly in our spiritual practice. It should remove distractions and prompt us to reflect on how we live and what we might need to change. I wonder what we might already be learning from this enforced Lenten fast and what we have still to learn before we can return to feasting again. Alongside the fast is the spiritual practice of confession and it is to that that we turn now. Here's Paul again. Please say the words on the screen if you'd like to join in with the prayer. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect, the Church's Prayer for Today. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Charles Fraser is the lead minister of the Everstons and soon also to be Interim Lead Minister of Halton. This is Charles, reading to us the principal Gospel reading for today, the fifth Sunday in Lent. John chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume, and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, 
but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Here ends the reading. Becca's role will be changing from Monday as she prepares to leave. Here are some thoughts on this reading from her. Hello, let's pray. I speak in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, today we hear all of 44 verses of the story of Lazarus. This dramatic episode that sees Lazarus uh, return from the dead, be brought back to life in a foretaste of what was to come that very first Easter. Well, at least with our churches not meeting in their buildings this week, and we've not made the toilet roll shortage uh, any worse. Usually it services up and down the land, at least for all age services. Thousands of children, or indeed grown-ups, on a Sunday when they talk about Lazarus, use quite a lot of this. <laughs> so, at least we're not wasting a lot of this this weekend. And joking apart, um, perhaps you have been afflicted with a shortage of toilet roll in your house, um, and if you have, um, do get in touch because we still have some and we are happy to share. Of course our lives are currently afflicted by far more than a shortage of loo roll. Not sure about you, but how are you today? As we remain at home, at least for some of us, we may relish the idea, the opportunity of pausing from a hectic life, perhaps, or the idea of getting on and being allowed to get on with the many jobs that have accrued over the time. Uh, enjoy the weather, we are fortunate that we've had good weather 
today and this last week. Perhaps we want to tackle the garden and indeed save money. These are things to be thankful for. But of course, for many of us, the uncertainty is really hard. Being on our own might feel daunting. Being with a husband and several children uh, cooped up in one place and not being able to leave might equally be daunting. Some of us will continue still to be working um, in many different ways and adapting what we do uh, to the challenge. Some of us, of course, are still having to go into work um, to support the infrastructure of our country. There is great uncertainty for businesses, for jobs, livelihoods, and as our way of life is put on hold in many different ways. And we continue to pray for the NHS and those working hard to support our communities. And of course, on top of all that, being ill isn't very nice. And for some of us, that can be scary to think about or indeed be in the midst of. And it brings real danger for some of us. Understandably, uh, many of us might be feeling scared or fearful at this time. And so as many of us are in this place of isolation or afflicted, if there's ever a story that speaks to us, it is the story of Lazarus. It is today's reading. Indeed, I read somewhere that Bethany uh, means, the meaning of Bethany is, which is where the action took, um, is, uh, means house of affliction. Are we in some way in Bethany today? Are we in a place of affliction as a nation, as a world, um, in our lives? This story of death and life is ours too, that we hear and read in our passage as a nation and across our world, as I've just said. And this has always been the case, of course. It is always our situation. But with COVID-19 particularly, it is stark, and particularly stark as we navigate these days together. Yet what struck me in the whole of those 44 verses that we've had read, um, that we've just heard, the miracle of Lazarus returning uh, to life um, happens at the end of our passage, where most of the miracles we see happen at the beginning and then Jesus teaches. But most of this passage indeed is given over to the way Jesus relates to the people in our story, how he relates to them around um, their grief or fear. In their time of affliction, Jesus draws near to them and does several things. Jesus, in our story, invites Martha to believe and trust. Even faced with death. In verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Martha, do you believe this? We read that uh, Martha replies and says, I believe it. But how very hard was that for her to say that day? We also see Jesus weeping with Mary. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, Jesus wept. Mary saw Jesus uh, understand her as he wept with her. Jesus also revealed to people who he was. We read in verse 40, then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. I knew that you would always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. And so Jesus invites Martha to believe and trust. Jesus accompanies Mary in her distress and weeps alongside her. And Jesus also revealed to them in the midst of the grief and anxiety and uncertainty, he reveals to them who he is. As we grieve, perhaps in our loss of freedom, uh, our fear at what might happen and the prospect of facing death itself. Jesus' words at the end strike me. Verse 31 says, So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, As I've just read to you, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you'd always hear me. And then with a loud voice, Jesus cries out and says, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus does come out. And Jesus says, Unbind him and let him go. 
facing our own place of affliction, whatever that might look like for you, perhaps held captive by fear and uncertainty. May we, like Martha, believe and trust in Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. And like Mary, encounter Jesus and know he hears our cries, not only our own cries, but the cries of all those for whom we love and indeed for around the world. And also, he weeps with us, for he is compassionate. And like Lazarus, experienced and others who witness, may we know in this time new life and freedom to be bearers of our hope in Christ as the Church of God. As we sing the Lord's song in this strange season and this strange land, so draw close to Christ in this season as he draws close to you in all that you're feeling and experiencing. And may you know freedom, freedom to pray, freedom to hope, freedom to love, freedom to serve, despite the physical restraints and the ways that might be new for us. But Jesus was about to do a new thing in Bethany then, and he was preparing his people to receive it. May we be faithful and remain close to him in this season, and may we trust that he will do a new thing in and through his church too. And so this passion tide, as we prepare to leave the wilderness and prepare to walk the way of the cross, may we trust that as we do, Jesus will do a new thing among us, here in the Lord's Bridge team and beyond. And may we have the courage to trust and follow. Amen. We're now going to try something a little different. Becca and I, between us, have recorded an interview a few days ago. We've put together the different bits of the recording into the next segment. Becca, if your time with us is a chapter in the story of your life, what would its title be? Okay, what uh, would this chapter uh, be called if it was a book? I think it would be called Roots and Shoots, this chapter, I think. Um, we have loved, I have loved being a vicar within the Lordsbridge team, team vicar uh, within the Lordsbridge team for the last five and a half years. As a reminder that actually our communities are rooted, our churches are rooted in the local in their local context, um, and that is so important uh, for the villages that they serve and the communities that they serve, and that's a real gift. And through that, there will always be uh, shoots of new life in various different ways, and it's been fun and um, a privilege to be able to spot those new uh, signs of growth and life uh, within each uh, context that I've been um, a privilege to be part of. So I think um, roots and shoots but also um, I guess making the space to uh, plant new things in which new roots can start uh, to grow and develop and I'd be excited to see how those things uh, come to fruition and, and shoot and blossom in uh, time to come and, let's, and I guess also for us as a family it's been very much about roots and shoots too you know we felt incredibly rooted here in the five years that we've been here really rooted and um, and I, I think that's a real thankfulness for uh, the village that we've lived in and the villages we've been part of and the team that we've been part of um, and and I think you know we've in our own family have seen things grow and nurture you know we came with a I think a seven month year old son and a nearly three year old uh, daughter and now they're eight and six um, yeah, so uh, we've nurtured a few more pets in the time, we've had chickens and our garden has been something of a real blessing to us. So roots and shoots, I think, for this uh, chapter. Uh, thankfulness for all that has grown and, uh, but also all that has been planted and will uh, bloom, I have no uh, concern in the future. So thankfulness for those rooted communities, but those new signs of life in where God is working in us and through us in the churches and communities that we live in. Tell us about some things that have made you laugh and some things that have made you cry. Do you really want to know? <laughs> I think people, 
people, it's relationships, it always is. For me, at least, the things that made have made me laugh in the last five years, the things that made me cry in the last five years, have all been around people and relationship. Um, relationships um, that have struggled or that, for those people that have died within our communities, that have been part of their lives, um, I have cried. It's been sad to see them go. Um, but actually, um, the joy to know that um, we have been part of their lives as a church and a community that I have been part of those lives too. Um, I'm, I've probably cried with laughter quite a bit as well. Um, and those things that made me laugh have been, uh, again, people. Uh, I have loved the villages that I've been part of and the church communities that I've been part of. We've been able to have a good laugh together and we've been able to cry together. And I think I've been really valued that. My colleagues too um, often make me laugh and um, often make me cry, no. Um, but I think it's all, isn't it? It's life and it's relationships. And without each other, um, yeah, life would be very dull. And so I've loved laughing and crying um, along with you because it's about sharing life together. What have you learned? What do you hope we have learned? Um, I have learned more about God. God whom we serve and that has been through the people that I have shared these last five years with um, in the team. I've learnt um, lots of his faithfulness, um, I've learnt more about him through the lives of those people that I've been part of and then that I am thankful. I've learnt more about myself, my gifts, uh, the things uh, I could continue to work on uh, and I've learnt more um, also learnt loads from my colleagues, it's been a real gift to be part of a team, uh, the wider team chapter, hugely blessed by the ministers and the ministry teams and the people within the village context that I've worked with and obviously in the wider team. So I think, um, what have I learnt? Heaps. I've learnt lots, um, lots through uh, you, uh, through all those people I've been part of um, and learnt lots more about God and of course we don't start stop learning so <clears throat> I've also um, learnt to be a mother in the last five years um, and I've learnt to be a vicar in the last five years and of course those things and minister those things will not stop <laughs> and will keep on learning just as we are all called to keep learning uh, too so I think um, I've learnt lots I've learnt that I love the outdoors um, and and that's been really important to me um, yeah so I've learnt a lot and I'm grateful for those people that have taught me a lot. Um, my colleagues, uh, the villages and communities, church communities I've been part of. And tell us what you're going to be doing next. What are you looking forward to? And what's the name of this next chapter in your story? So what am I about to do? Well, not quite yet, but um, I am... Uh, we have felt called, uh, I have felt called to be a um, pioneer minister in uh, the Western Dales, which is in Cumbria, and we um, will move there at some point. So the title for that, I think, for the next chapter is still a working title, and it's called TBC, because uh, <laughs> I'm not quite sure um, how that will evolve. Uh, and I think, nor do I want to make... Uh, yeah, I, I don't want uh, to have a title ready and waiting because that's the beauty of uh, the role in which case, in which it is about uh, moving there, it's about getting to know uh, new people and learning again from them and seeing what God is already doing in that place and how might I be able to, I guess, help and encourage that uh, in the way that I've been called. So really, it should be TBC. Uh, because um, none of us know um, <clears throat> and nor do I want to uh, give it a title but uh, that's what I'll be doing I suspect I hope there'll be more outdoors and uh, we might need a tumble dryer <laughs> um, more outdoors stuff perhaps and working within uh, the farming communities maybe um, a lot of uh, small farming communities in that place um, and also working ecumenically, which is exciting, working with uh, the URC and the Methodist Church. And it's also where Quaker, the Quaker started, in George Fox, uh, that area. And that land's really interesting because it takes in where we are, Lancashire, Yorkshire and Cumbria, although it is in Cumbria now. Um, but it's like a Twix land, it's that in the middle land. 
um, and what what are the gems and um, what are the, uh, the precious things about uh, being that kind of place uh, for that area and for God uh, to use it and to grow his church in. Becca's family have been an important part of her life here and have helped shape her ministry. We thank God for them too. We have worked together, prayed together, hoped together, laughed together. We say goodbye with gratitude and sadness. Today we begin the process of releasing Becca from her role and responsibilities. Her team-wide responsibilities for students, for weddings, for meetings of the chapter have already been handed over. And her lead minister responsibilities in Coton and Barton will be handed over from this weekend. Then in the next weeks, those in Halton and Hazlingfield will follow. And I pray with all of you for Becca, that her hands will be open to receive what God has in store by way of new colleagues and friends and by way of new projects. I pray that she and her family embrace the future with all that they have and are. Becca, Rich, Minty and Benedict, may God bless you richly. Here's Becca again. I'd love to pray. So let's pray for us all. Loving God, thank you that you call each one of us to proclaim your good news and recognise that in one another, together, even though separate, physically separate for a while, we are the body of Christ. We are his hands and his feet. We are Christ's hands and feet, Christ's ears and his prophetic voice in our communities. And so may we trust you as you call us onwards to sing your song of love in this strange land allowing our gifts to be expressed perhaps in new ways for the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, in our homes, in our communities, through our churches, through our networks, and again in our Lord's Bridge team and beyond. Amen. When we meet together in a Sunday service, we say words together to affirm our faith. And that's what I'm going to invite you to do now. Each stanza of this simple affirmation is led by a different minister in the team. Please do join in with the words on the screen if you would like to. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. David Newton is the lead minister in Caldicott, Combaton and Toft. He also co-leads Bread Church and is taking on responsibility for weddings from Becca, amongst other things. Here's David with our prayers for others and for ourselves. So we pray for our community and our world in need at this time. God of love. We lift to you all those who are working in the health services throughout the world, particularly praying for those who work in our NHS. Give them strength, endurance and the knowledge of your peace at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those involved in leadership, for our government and the governments of the world that you would endow them with wisdom to defeat this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And we pray too for our communities, that they would draw together, that there would be an outflow of compassion and kindness, that neighbours would seek to serve one another, and that there would be a sense of your peace in these troubling times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now come to pray for our team as it enters this new period of vacancy. First, a prayer for the team. God of the journey, you give your church all she needs to witness to your love, and through making us a team, have given us each other to support us in that task. As we lean on one another at this time, may we find ourselves leaning on you, our rock and fortress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for Becca and her family. God of the journey, you give us diverse gifts with which to serve your church and have blessed us through the ministry of Becca. As she and her family journey on, may your light mark their way ahead that they might walk in the path of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the journey, who calls us to be ministers of the gospel in our communities, that the light of your presence might be known in every place. Raise up the churches of Barton, Coton, Halton and Hazlingfield, that they might be strengthened by your spirit and set ablaze with your love. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the journey, whose spirit blows where it will, Move amongst your people and draw to this team a new minister who will equip us to build your kingdom. Prepare our hearts to work with them in the service of your Son, our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we bring our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When we worship together as the Lord's Bridge team of churches, it's our practice to light candles to represent each of the worshipping communities or our congregations in the network. And to light one extra candle to represent the next as yet unknown worshipping community that we pray will be established. Our vision in the Lord's Bridge team is to be a network of many worshipping communities, 11 of which meet in parish churches on Sunday mornings, but a 12th is a community for under fives and carers, a 13th meets monthly for seniors, a 14th is for families who meet to make bread and pray, a 15th is a monthly gathering of young people. So our closing prayer is for these and for those who participate in them, particularly during this time. So we pray this morning for the church communities of Barton, Caldicott, Coton, Comberton, Dry Drayton, Great and Little Everston, Hardwick, Halton, Hazlingfield and Toft. We pray for the Monday Mornings community, for Oasis Tees and their community, for Bread Church, for Messy Church, for Thirst, and for another as yet unknown fresh expression of church, a new community of pilgrims. So we close with the team prayer. Please say it with me if you would like to. Lord God, in your love you sent your son. In your grace you called us back to you in your mission, you placed us where we are and formed us into a team. Call us onward into your purposes and growth 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>